Yeah, so we believe Asia is very important. I had the chance to live in Asia, you know, for three years of my life uh, in the 90s. Uh, so what we want to do with Asia, I think, is two things. We want to set up our own Moderna operations. And actually, we are talking to a few countries about doing that because there are a few very attractive countries in Asia to set up a Moderna Asia. But also, we are also talking with local uh, Asian-based pharmaceutical companies uh, because we believe you know, the Asian market has some very specific features that will make us more successful in the long term to work with somebody who knows the space well, just having to reinvent everything from scratch. So the issue with a disruptive technology is it's disruptive, meaning nobody has really thought about it before and people are very skeptic. So I would say in the first you know, couple of years of a company, it was very difficult to get any attention from investors, from big pharma company, because everybody who looked at our idea or data were like, you guys are crazy. Uh, now things have changed a lot. Uh, first, because we have a lot of data. So with data, we're able to convince people that this is for real. And also, I think that people are getting uh, more comfortable because other pharma companies or other investors have come into the story and have got to understand it. So I think there's also a credibility issue that comes with who has partnered with you or who has invested with you. There are still lots of, of skeptics. I mean, I remember we just raised uh, some new financing uh, in the fall and there were several investors who turned us down because they're like, this is just too crazy, too risky. So you will always have this conundrum, but you have to pick your poison because either you have something that's plain vanilla, but it has no attractivity, or you have something that's very novel, but then you have to convince people. Yeah, I think the piece uh, where I get asked the question a lot, you know, why is Moderna not being created in Europe or not being created in Asia? I think the piece that's quite unique about the US that I will say Asia will have to do more of is this combination of academia investment world, you know, venture capitalists, and entrepreneurs. Because you need the three to work together. You know, Moderna came from academia, from Harvard and MIT. But you had the venture capital next to uh, literally MIT, literally a block away from MIT, who knew the professors, so that when the professors called and said, I have this crazy data and crazy ID, there was already a human relationship. Uh, I believe that if you know, Bob Langer, who is the MIT professor I'm talking about, uh, and Nuba, who is the, the CEO and founder of Flagship, the venture capital, had not known each other and had a lot of trust. When Bob picked the call, you know, to call Nuba, most probably Nuba would have said, this guy is crazy, I don't know him anyway, so I'm not gonna do anything about it. But it's just the opposite, because Nuba has so much trust in Bob's instinct and scientific capability, that it's okay, I'm coming, I want to see that data. And then he's finding the team, the entrepreneurs in the labs, the business people who want to take a risk and come together. So I think Asia has to do more in terms of having more VCs and also setting up the, the culture where it's okay to fail. Because the thing that's very unique about America is that you know, if we fail at Moderna, I have no uh, worry that my team will be able to find great jobs because they will have accomplished great things, they will have learned a lot, and there will be an environment to hire them again. Whereas I'm not sure in Asia or in Europe, if you want, if people coming out of a bankrupt company will have a lot of opportunities for new jobs. Mm -hmm.